Hello everyone and welcome to my channel RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games, reveal fascinating trivia, and do my best to give them a fun and informative analysis. First off, to all of you out there, I hope you are doing well and staying safe during this time of crisis. As it turns out for me, with my DJ business, things are kind of shut down until further notice here in Maryland, so I guess I will be using my free time here to make some videos. This week I'm going back to 1994 to take a look at the adventure module Hail the Heroes for the second edition of Dungeons & Dragons. This is the very first adventure for the newly revamped Mistara line of products. The world of Mistara brought over from the Beckme line of Gazetteers, there were two box sets released for it. The first was Kingdom of Karamikos, and the second was Kalantri Kingdom of Magic. This module takes place from the political setup in the Karamikos box set. The Church of Karamikos, its military branch, the Order of the Griffin, the Church of Traladara, and the Cult of Halav mixes in some political intrigue, the history of the Traladaran people, a quest for a powerful artifact culminating in a traditional dungeon crawl and uses an audio CD to assist in the storytelling. Sound like fun? I thought so too. There's a lot going on in this one and some fun trivia, so let's get started. Spoiler warning, I will be revealing some aspects of this module, so if you would like to play in this adventure, then direct your DM here. Halav! Who said... Halav Redhair! <gasps> Who are you? We are immortals, and we have a purpose for you. Why me? What have I done? It is not what you have done, it is what you will do. You will gain strength and skill as a warrior. We will teach you the way of bronze, not stone. You and your companions will spread this knowledge through the lands until humanity dominates this world. You are chosen. King Holland! King Holland! The king of the beastmen challenges you! Human! Human! I challenge you! Face to face! Blade to blade! Hand me my shield. King Holland, he's twice as tall as you are. His stone axe... Will be no match for my bronze shield. They've been fighting for hours, yet neither show sign of fatigue. They know the fate of two peoples rest on their shoulders. There can be no quarter. Halif doesn't see the bodies of fallen warriors behind him. You will fall. Never. King Halif, no. look out. No, oh, trip. Die, human. Oh. Oh. I... Yes. <laughs> King Olaf has fallen! Avenge King Olaf! Avenge the King! Avenge the King! Avenge the King! Avenge And so the shield of Halov disappeared from human history. Centuries later, a hero from the north recovered it, building a wondrous temple to its glory. But this too passed away. In the fullness of time, men forgot its location. It fell into ruin and was abandoned. Once again, the shield was lost. And so it has remained until now. That is an excerpt from the audio CD from Hail the Hero's Adventure Module. It is a retelling of the Song of Halav, how Halav was contacted by the Immortals 
arose to be king of Chaladar and save Chaladar from destruction at the hands of a marauding horde of gnolls. Released in 1994 by TSR, Hail the Heroes was the first adventure for the newly revamped Mastara line of products for the second edition of Dungeons & Dragons. The module relies heavily on an important event on the history of the Traladaran people, the death of King Halav Redhair at the hands of a Knoll warchief, and his ascension to immortality. One of the more interesting aspects of the campaign setting of Mistara is that there are no gods but immortals, and there are grand quests that mortals can take to achieve immortality. Way back in 2014, I discussed this in great detail in my review of the D&D Rules Cyclopedia, so check the link above if you'd like to learn more about that aspect of this campaign. This module is packed in a thin box, as were all modules of the CD line. That included the 40-page module, four parchment prop handouts for the players, a full-sized poster map that is also a player handout, and the audio CD in a jewel case, and was the third audio CD product released by TSR. One of the big improvements of this CD audio track over the two previous releases, the first quest introductory box set and the Kingdom of Karamikos box set, was that the audio CD did not attempt to voice the player characters as well as the NPCs. Only the NPCs are now voiced, and with careful pausing and playing, can be interactive. Now, obviously, not all possible NPC responses are recorded, so the DM will have to step into the role. And if you are not a voice DM, that can be a bit incongruent. I always had fun with these, trying to see how close to the NPC voice I could get. The module centers on the recovering of an ancient religious artifact, the Shield of Halav, for the Church of Traladar, and is broken into three parts. In part one, the setup and overview of the adventure is provided for the DM that details the plot, the various factions that will play a big part in the adventure, the Order of the Griffin, the Church of Traladar, and the Cult of Halav. The major NPCs of the adventure are also detailed. All of these factions are classic organizations for Karamikos, going all the way back to Gazetteer 1, the Grand Duchy of Karamikos, for the basic D&D game. In Part 2, Getting There, the PCs get involved in the adventure when responding to a town crier going through the streets of Miros, the capital city of Karamikos, attempting to find adventurers, For a matter of great import, as the crier likes to say. And I'll let you hear the crier right now. Hear ye, hear ye. The Church of Trolladara seeks faithful followers for a task of great import. Even if ye not be faithful followers... The Church of Trolladara accepts bold adventurers of any stripe, almost any stripe, for a task of great import. Apply to the Trolladaran Temple on Westron Alley near the Merchant District. As you can hear, this is a pretty basic start to the adventure. Either the players respond to the town crier and begin the adventure, or they don't. Hopefully they respond. If they do, they will be introduced to a cleric of the Traladaran church named Desmic. Welcome, travelers. I am Desmic of the church of Traladara. We must determine if you're worthy of hire for our quest. Please answer all questions honestly. There is no hope in lying to a man of the church. First, your names and professions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spell that, please. Good. Now, more importantly, to which church do you belong? Hmm. Very well. I must now ask each of you to vow you will aid the Church of Traladara for the duration of this mission. 
If you agree to this oath, you will be amply rewarded and rest secure in the knowledge you've aided the church. Do you so agree? Well, do you? Swear or I cannot continue. Wonderful. Follow me, please. I will take you to Barrows, who will explain your task. Enter. Obviously, the DM will have to pause, stop between the questions here, and also step into the role of the NPC if necessary. This can be a lot of fun if pulled off correctly. If the players get through the interview with Desmic, they'll be introduced to Beric, a higher level cleric who has been assigned the task of recovering the legendary shield of Halav. This section is a lot of fun as the characters will have to actually research the legends of the Traladar and Karamekan people to find the location of the Lost Temple of Zadreth, which is the last known location of the shield. They are aided, or hindered, by a variety of NPCs. Essentially, the Church of Traladar is attempting to throw off various spies who might also want to recover the artifact by hiring outside help, and letting them do the research rather than their own clerics, most notably the Cult of Halav. The Cult of Halav is an offshoot clerical order of the Church of Traladar that believes that King Stefan Karamikos is actually the fallen Traladar king Halav reincarnated. The Church of Traladar finds itself in a time of decline, with the rise of the Church of Karamikos and the radical Cult of Halav siphoning off their membership. It is their hope that the recovery of Halav's shield, a revered religious artifact, could inspire the faithful and return the church to its former glory. The research portion of the adventure takes place in two libraries. First, Desmic and Barris lead the PCs to the church library, and it's here that the heroes first learn that there might be additional trouble they hadn't anticipated when a spy, Jenna, is found in the church library itself. Sister Jenna, what brings you here? Oh, Brother Desmic, you surprised me. Visiting the temple, hmm? Why, yes. Looking for you, oh. in truth, to discuss um, merging our two congregations together. Oh. Why, such a wonderful lot of old, interesting books. I do love to enrich myself with old history now and then. Oh dear, time must be fleeting. Do you know the hour? We're still a full hour from noon. Oh, my. I'm late for an appointment. Well, we must chat later. Bye. After Jenna leaves, Barris and Desmic have a brief discussion in front of and with the heroes, voicing their belief that Jenna is secretly a spy for the cult of Halav. I fear Jenna may be a spy. No. She's long been a faithful member of the Church of Traladar. And recently joined the cult of Halav. Then the cult must have learned of the shield and be out to capture it for themselves. They no doubt wish to present it to King Stefan so he can lead the Traladaran nation back to greatness. There are many dangerous members in the cult. Yes. So you, adventurers, must hurry to ensure they do not acquire the shield before you. So in this part, you're basically setting up some time pressure to recover the shield by introducing the competition of the Cult of Halav. The other library location is the official Mirrors Library. The audio CD adds in a lot of fun here as you can actually play the clues that help the heroes piece together the location of the Lost Temple. For example, here is the excerpt from As I Journey, The Tale of a Rural Preacher by Milinos Kavinovich. So Arto and I continued to walk some distance south of Zedrith, where eventually we came upon a cave entrance. To our right stood a formation of rocks that reminded me of a nesting of huge eggs. 
the cave entrance possessed an odd overhang like the beak of an eagle. And the rest of my stay was quite exciting and invigorating as well as I debated various interpretations of the Song of Halov with the priests of the Temple of the Shield, including Halov's relationship with the other priests. And this excerpt from The Dragon's Tomb by Joshua Manier. From the east, down from the wolf holes. The small village of Threshold seemed friendly enough, but we had come from the wrong side. The peasants stared at us, and when I nodded to some, only one nodded back, and that one looked reluctant. Six wooden buildings circled the center of town with no more than a dozen huts surrounding them. There were two taverns, which made me wary. Two drinking establishments in one tiny village meant a community divided. In the Mirror's Library, in addition to clues, the heroes can meet several interesting NPCs. For example, the bard Havig Torescu, who offers the perspective of the cult of Halav <laughs> in an amusing way, <laughs> and offers to put them in touch with the cult. Researching history, eh, friends? Oh! <gasps> Religious history, my favorite. The favorite of the cult of Halaf, too. Especially the song of Halaf. Shh. Halaf. A great man. A superb warrior. A magnificent leader. Did you know that Halaf has returned to us? Shh. When Halaf died... The immortals were so impressed with him that they came down and restored him to life. They placed him in a deep sleep, preserving him until such time as he is needed to return the country to greatness. <laughs> that time is now. Halaf has returned to us as King Stefan. It's true. What a colossal chest the immortals have played on us, bringing our savior in the guise of a conqueror. But look, he's established independence for the nation, and now he leads us to greatness. <laughs> you know, the cult of Halaf would be especially grateful if you uh, could help them. Especially if it meant the cult could help Halaf. If you should ever desire to speak with the cult, ask for me, Klaus Jorga. I can put you in touch with them. <laughs> Honestly, this is just a lot of fun, right? So there's some fun voice acting, and most importantly, actual clues are given in the audio sections that the players will need to piece together to complete their quest. This interactivity permeates the entire module and really shows off the potential that this format offers. Once the research is completed, the heroes know they need to travel north to the town of Threshold, putting the location of the Temple of the Shield in Threshold is a nice touch by designer Tim Beach. Threshold is a classic D&D town, making its first appearance all the way back in 1983 with the Frank Menser revised version of the expert set. Of course, Threshold is two or three days travel from Miros through the town of Krakatos and Riffelin and the village of Verge. There are, of course, random encounters to be had along the way and audio CD tracks to accompany a few of them. The heroes can encounter Sir Brefric along the road, a member of the Order of the Griffin. Hail and well met, fellow travelers. I am Sir Brefric of the Order of the Griffin. Who are you, and what brings you to these parts? In addition to a few role-playing encounters, there is definitely some combat, including a rather boisterous and combat-eager ogre named Thog. Let's 
like fog. Foggy too. Then kill you. Short days, father fog. Yeah, stand still. So fog can hit you. I'll squash your bones and make paste out of you. No more. Once the heroes make it to Threshold, they still need to track down the exact location of the Temple of the Shield, and there are several more encounters with the Call to the Lav, the Order of the Griffin, and even a tie-in with the Trouble in Threshold adventure from the Kingdom of Karamikos box set. Once the temple is finally found, the module moves to the next section, Part 3, The Lost Temple. This is essentially the meat of the module, and I have to say it doesn't disappoint. This is where the parchment handouts come into play, the poster map of the dungeon that isn't a miniatures map, but a map of clues to help the heroes navigate many of the dangerous traps and pitfalls of the temple labyrinth found during their library research. In addition to the poster map and the parchment handouts, there are illustrations in the module itself that can be shown to players to help them solve certain clues. Back in the day, when I ran this, I photocopied everything and handed the illustrations out at the appropriate time. I also photocopied the parchment handouts because, while very cool, the room detail illustrations are on one parchment, and I didn't want to cut the parchment handout up. Of course, there are many audio tracks to go with this section, many of them very cool and atmospheric sound effects that you can use in your own creations later on down the road, long after the possibilities of the module are exhausted. For example, here's the sound of darts shooting out of a wall for a dart trap. Or the sound of a skeleton falling apart as it dies. All of this is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the makers of the CD were kind of thoughtless with some of these tracks by applying the end of track sound to every single track, which is really annoying in several of the tracks that would be most useful if they were looped during a scene. For example, sounds of the town as the PCs make their way through Threshold. This really spools the effect if every 30 seconds of the loop you hear this. Fortunately, if you have these tracks on your computer, you can edit out that noise with a program like Audacity, which is free to download. Just open the track to the software and you'll see it graphically represented in waveform. The end of track sound is easily recognized by the sudden spike at the end of the track. All you need to do is mouse over and left click to highlight the section you want to remove and hit backspace. Now just go to File, Export, and Save as an MP3. And you've essentially removed the offending noise, so now you can loop your tracks during play. There are 89 total tracks on the Hail of Heroes CD, so I'm not suggesting you do this with all of them, but those that you might want to loop to play as a background during a scene, such as when the giant rats attack. One of my favorite scenes in the module is Room 29. And okay, big spoilers here, so if you want to play, skip ahead about three minutes. Room 29 is one of the final big encounters of the module. As the heroes enter the room, they see six statues, three along the east and three along the west walls. 
As they enter, they hear... And there's an illustration for the statues. One for when they initially enter. And then another after you play the audio track. So you can see the two illustrations together. One's slightly different. Also, there's an illustration of the archway along the south wall. Of course, if the heroes enter this room and attempt to make their way to the archway, they are surrounded by the statues and hear this. Identify yourselves or you shall not pass. This is actually the encounter depicted on the cover of the module. How the Heroes was written by Tim Beach. The cover art depicting the climactic scene of the module was illustrated by Paul Jacques. Interior art by Daniel R. Frazier. And the poster map was done by Rab Lazaretti. There are actually two Mistara novel tie-ins with this module. The Dragon Lord of Mistara and the second book of the Penhaligon trilogy, The Dragon's Tomb. Once the heroes uncover the Shield of Halab, they also find a tome, the Dragon Lord of Mistara. And amusingly, the module encourages the DM to actually hand the novel over to the players. On track 19 that I played earlier, the excerpt from the Dragon's Tomb is actually an excerpt from the novel of the same name. I really enjoy this sort of interactive multimedia storytelling, and it's kind of a shame that module producers haven't taken advantage of modern advancements to do more of this sort of thing. Certainly sound effects and voice acting excerpts could be easily downloaded these days. No need for a CD at all. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Hail the Heroes on my D20 rating system of style, presentation, and value. Style-wise, this module follows the standard format from 1990's TSR line of products. The pages are semi-gloss, the module is saddle-stapled, there are four high-quality parchment handouts, a poster map handout, and of course the very cool audio CD. High production values by 1990's standards, so I'll rate this a 19. Looking at the presentation, this is a big improvement over the prior CD releases where TSR has refined the format a bit so that only the NPCs are voiced. And there are tons of audio clues in the tracks. The artwork is all done very well, though the illustrations mingled in with the text in Part 3 also need to be shown to the players, which is a bit awkward if one doesn't have access to a copier. I imagine that in an effort to keep costs down, they were not also included in the parchment handouts. So I'll rate this one a 16. Finally, let's look at value. This is a little bit of a tough one. You can get this module at Drive Through RPG as a PDF and print on demand book for only $4.99. Unfortunately, that does not include the audio CD tracks which are needed to run this adventure, which shows the weakness of this format. As cool as it is, decades later, getting a complete module to play with the audio CD is difficult. When this module shows up on eBay, they go for around $40 on up, depending on condition and completeness. The original box set sold for only $15.00 which is a good deal even back then, making it competitive with modules that didn't include CDs. I'm going to rate this 16 as well. That brings my overall rating of this classic CD module from TSR to 17. Very good. A quick note about the PDF download at DriveThruRPG. It is a very good one. It's a high quality scan. The poster map is full sized and not chopped up and I used a capture from the PDF for this review as well as all the images from the module. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and useful. My DJ business has pretty much been brought to non-existent due to the pandemic, so you will certainly see a big spike in content over the next several weeks as I'm basically working from home at this point. If you could please help out the channel, if you decide to make a purchase on something I've discussed, use the links in the description for drive through RPG and Amazon as they are affiliate links and I'll get a little something if you click on them. Also a big shout out to my Patreons who have been very generous by supporting me. Finally, please subscribe and click the little bell so you can get notifications when I upload more content. Like, comment, and share. Join the RPG Retro Review Facebook group and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.